Hello all, Havoc here. Let's get ready to play some Space Engineers. Okay, in this episode we are going to work on putting the hulls on the outside of the two ships we've created over the last uh, couple episodes. We're going to be doing the new Reaper and the new Scorpion. Uh, so what we're going to do is, is uh, we're going to take these guys outside. And his remote block, we're going to get it a name, so it'll be at the top. If I can type, it'll make it a lot easier. Alright. Actually, before we get started on this, I want to take a moment and um, I want to thank uh, Thing 1 and Thing 2. Um, within a very short period of time. Um, I got approved the other day for, uh, there's a program for YouTubers and several other artists of different types for this program called Patreon. And I got approved and got my account set up and everything. And shortly within, I wasn't very long after I got my account all set up and everything, Thing 1 and Thing 2 had come over there and have uh, pledged a monthly subscription to my Patreon account. For those that don't know, it's a way for viewers like yourselves um, to openly donate and receive benefits for donating. Um, they are my first donation, and it's fantastic. I really appreciate Thing 1 and Thing 2 for going out of their way and doing that. It's phenomenal, and I, I very much so appreciate it. Um, for those that don't want to go through and set up on a Patreon, if you guys do want to donate to my channel and help me move forward with things, um, there's the uh, Google Donate button. It's usually in the bottom right-hand corner right below the video. But um, yeah, that's phenomenal. Every dollar that I get goes towards getting better equipment. Um, yeah, it's, it just it all helps. And I want to say thank you as the first... Uh, person on my Patreon account to donate. Um, that's phenomenal, and I, I was I was blown away. I really was, and that was awesome. So thank you guys. So back to what we were doing. So we'll go to remote block control. Alright, so we can slide out here pretty easily. Alright, this is a little nibble ship. That pewter color, color gives off an orange glow from the back side quite, quite well. Okay, that was interesting. Um, the thrusters are tweaking out on the ship to the right. That's weird. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab the other ship. Reaper Mark III, Control. And we haven't set up this camera yet, so let's do that now. Wrong direction. Alright, so this should have the same clearance. Oh, we're not upside down. That's why I was like, why are we going to go a different direction? Alright. Okay. We get these guys out here in the light. That's why I brought them out here, so it's be a little bit easier to see. And let's go ahead and go on out there. All right. So the thrusters on this guy, I think, are going to be in a good spot. I'm going to go ahead and just go with heavy armor on him as well. Um, a real reason why not to, right? So let's go ahead and get color here. 
I'm just going to shift color the whole thing. All right, so that's good. And same with you, buddy. There we go. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to that. I didn't mean to unselect it. I think I should probably do something about like this. Uh, I want to leave this open so we can get that, uh, oops, wrong one. So we can put those reactors in across the bottom. Because it's going to need some more, uh, more power, so. This is one of those times where I really wish there was a type, a, some type of symmetry mode inside a uh, uh, single player campaign because this would make this so much easier. I'd probably build much larger ships if that feature was available. I mean, part of the reason of daunting ships is one, when you're trying to build something that looks cool and be all uh, symmetrical and everything, it just falls flat on its face when it just isn't. So, yeah, I think if they added a way to do symmetry that made sense, um, that'd be really cool. So I think obviously we're going to want to put some angled blocks in here. Actually, I'd probably put an angled block right there too to slope in towards the thrusters, just make it look kind of cool. So, do we want to go up one more? No, we don't. Okay. Actually, I'm going to put that heavy armor block right there. Just about everything else with the DirectX 11 update seems to be quite a bit faster. Um, very, a lot more responsive than any of the other stuff we've come across so far. So, that's been a welcome change. All right. Yeah, the world saved. That's incredibly better than it was. Um, oh. Of course, right where I don't want it. And again, with the not where I want it. Alright, so let's see. Let's grab... Oh, I figure we started on the welding ship. So we'll get these guys out of the way. And, uh... So when we turn around and we're ready to weld up the other ships, we can just take them in, park them in Sizzy, and she can do all the work. All the heavy lifting and whatnot. All right. And safe. Man, it's been a while since I've flown the ship. All right, let's see here. Well, that just happened. I have no idea what I just blew up. Probably a container full of like expensive ores or something. Uh, no, just the entire docking ring. That's fantastic. Way to go, Havoc. Good thing that thing's scrap. Oy. This is why we can't have nice things, guys. So I had a issue with steam yesterday or actually this morning is and I've noticed this quite a while ago and just thought I'd bring it up and see if you guys have the same issue where it looks like oh wow how many ships can have it crash in one episode that was awesome because it a um, little bit of physics overlap there that it turned around came down here and then crashed into crashed into that that's Pretty awesome. All right. Again, glad you're scrap, buddy. All right. 
Uh, shaking my head, shaking my head. Alright, so we're going to get these guys here done. <laughs> I still don't have steel plates. I should have robbed them right out of the ships that we were just trashing. Uh... Alright, so basically what I want to do is make these things like little bricks. So when we bring them into dock, they're that much easier to dock. And they're just that much more durable for when crap like that happens. Um, I really want to have the uh, all the corners to be... Oh, that's not going to work now, is it? So I really like to have as much of the corners uh, armored up as possible. Um... Granted, I'm probably going, look, but it looks like I'm going back to the uh, flying ice cream sandwich, but um, function first, if it works, it's kind of hard to deny it, so. Um. Okay, so we'll put some wedge blocks in there. And there's no reason to put anything across the front. Actually, I think it'd be a good idea to do that. But I'll do those as wedges or something, so. Um, same thing with these. These will be wedges. Um, same with you. No. Those are not wedges. The one that goes right here is a wedge. So. Alright, there we go. Yeah, I can imagine, like, being able to do this. I, I Like I said, I don't care if it costs supplies. Uh, but to be able to do this for with symmetry mode. So. Something to think about Steam. Or, well, Steam. Keen software. Uh, some way for us to have symmetry mode and single player. Alright, let's we'll cut these off. Let's actually throw some blades in. So. I don't waste on supplies. Probably take that top row off and put conveyors on it, or not conveyors, wedges on it as well. Okay. Ah, come on, Havoc. Okay. Yeah, I could probably run a strip down here and all that. I'm not I'm not sure I want to do that yet. If it design looks like I could use it, then we'll do it. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, and this one. Alright, so let's go ahead and fly this guy back in. We are on Scorpion. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to try to fly him straight in. Let's see here. Can we come inside and watch? So I think if you line straight up, then he'll be fine. So I'm not even going to watch. So I'm not even going to watch the carnage. Okay, so now we know it's flat. So that's it. Ah, 
and that's how you weld 150 something blocks all at the same time. All right, so let's go ahead and check its maneuverability now that it's got uh, all that extra armor on there and see if this is an appropriate amount of weight for that many thrusters. It's better. Definitely can use some gyro uh, reduction. I'm not sure. Let's see if I can pilot it back in. Aha. <laughs> Uh, check out our gauge. That it checks gravity based on the drone, not where we're at. That's pretty funny. Little bug there, Keen Software. Not that it's a big one, right? By any stretch of the imagination. So, a little decorative things need to happen, but overall, I think it's a pretty nimble ship. I like it. So it's pretty nimble right now, and it doesn't even have enough power. So that's something else you need to keep in mind, is it's overload no matter which direction it moves, outside or just rotating. So. Uh, we smack the floor, it welds it. Oh, uh, that's funny. Oh, that's pretty freaking funny. All right, so there we go. Floor is all fixed. So let's go ahead and go to number three. And we want to park... Oh, this isn't good. Oh, there's the Andrea right there. I was like, oh, crap. I think I smacked the Andrea a couple times here. All right, so let's go ahead and park right here. And that should be pretty close where we want it, right? That's not bad. Pretty close. I think uh, we might end up putting uh, like a bumper or a full square right there instead of the angled. And that might give us a little bit of the, the indexing that we're needing to park in the right spot. All right, buddy, you're going to go outside too. Okay. And this guy's going to get pretty much the same exact treatment. Um, I mean, I, I, I know it's going to the... Man, the mouse is way more bouncy. I think that's got to be it. Um, but yeah, let me guys, let me let the bearded bear just for having complete sentences. Uh, let me know in the comments below, guys, what you think uh, about where these ships are going as far as uh, d overall design and look. Um, I'd like to hear back from you guys on what you think I should be doing differently, if there is anything, or did I get it right this time? And do you think they'll actually last longer than? 
some of my other previous ships. And again, the Maelstrom wasn't my fault, guys. I, I really liked that ship, and <clears throat> I wasn't even anywhere near it when it decided to detach from the barge and go flying off into the distance. So, yeah, that one wasn't my fault. So, so we're going to wrap up the episode here. I'm just going to keep plugging away at getting some blocks on these things, try to get them some shape. If I do anything really crazy, like crash ships like earlier... Um, I'll bring you guys back. I pretty much record everything I, for the most part. On very rare occasions do I not record what I'm doing. Um, I usually just record it all and then just add out all the boring stuff. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap up the episode here. Oh wow, look, Susie is so much faster. Every direction simultaneously pointing at the right spot. And like that, um, he's armored. Uh, not the prettiest of ships, that's for sure. But um, it's definitely going to get the job done. Uh, definitely more reactors on this ship as well. So, all right, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, oh, oh, oh. Actually, before we do, we're going to rename the ship. Um, we, One of yours suggested a better name. So we're going to go to info... If the software will let me. So we're going to go with Scorpion D as in drone and uh, Mark II. So uh, when we went to the D class, this is the Mark II of the D class, basically. So we can continue on with the Scorpion nomenclature and then the drone nomenclature. So I kind of like that idea. So, you know, yeah, uh, the Enterprise A through, what, they get to G or something like that? But um, that's just the Enterprise class ship. There was different variants of that ship. So, um, right. So, fantastic. Things are coming along. In the next episode, we're going to uh, try to produce, or we're going to carbon copy all the ships and um, make sure they all produce correctly, uh, basically. Um, we'll put them on the projector block and project them out and see about building every single ship that's in our fleet. Uh, so it's going to be the Scorpion D Mark II, this guy right here, our new Reaper Mark III. Actually, that's going to be Reaper D because we did that one in one shot. It's going to be Reaper D. And then we're going to do the Andrea, and there's a couple other small ships in our fleet, the little micro drones. Uh, so we're going to get all those welded up and make sure they all function. And uh, we're going to take it from there. And then once we have the fleet done, uh, we're going to make sure everything works great with that. We're going to copy the Kestrel. And Susie as well. Because I'm not sure when I go to go do the server move if the Susie is going to come along for the ride. So I'm pretty sure she did when I did it on the test world. Um, when we did the... 100 uh, episodes? 150 episodes? Or was that a subscriber video? I'm not sure. But we uh, copied the Kestrel into that video and basically flung it around. And there were Susies inside those. So um, so I'm pretty sure that that will work. But still, we're going to blueprint Susie as well. If we wanted to use this ship someplace else, we could. Alright, so this is Havoc. Have fun. Thanks, Thing 1 and Thing 2. You're awesome. Keep gaming.